Yes. Why is it that when we think of the future, truly utopian scenarios, scenarios in which everything is wonderful, why is it that we don't tend to find them credible? One reason is that when one actually uh, thinks of the future, what one is doing psychologically is recalling science fiction movies uh, one has watched and sci-fi novels one has read perhaps as a teenager and one of the uh, most uh, stirring sci-fi movies many of us have watched is The Time Machine by H.G. Wells and if you recall the, uh, the Eloy and the Morlocks the Eloy were these beautiful, happy, sweet, angelic, beautiful creatures who essentially lived indolent lives as lotus eaters and because they were so happy and trusting because they had got rid of the nasty side of life they were prey to the Morlocks who lived underground were bestial, ugly, aggressive uh, and this perhaps is what one imagines if one uh, thinks or tries to imagine what a future society would be like if we, if we did phase out and nastier Darwinian emotions of, of fear, disgust, anxiety, competitive status seeking. Uh, uh, this is this is one kind of scenario. Won't it? Won't uh, a perpetual bliss or even perpetual gradients of well-being uh, turn us into into milksops, indolent lotus eaters, a uh, 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 spineless, weak-willed creatures? Um, I think there are very powerful reasons for thinking this scenario is unlikely and that in virtue of radically recalibrating the hedonic treadmill this says nothing at all about motivation or strength of character and by amplifying mesolimbic dopamine function for example it's possible to radically intensify uh, our motivation our capacity to uh, anticipate reward uh, even today we know that uh, the happiest people on the whole tend to be the most motivated and so it's not simply a matter of enriching hedonic tone we'll also be able to strengthen our motivation our, our empathy uh, we'll also be able to preserve the functional analogues of anxiety other things being equal, the more one loves life, the more motivated one is to preserve it. Uh, so it's not the case that if we, are, if we enjoy ritually happy and fulfilled lives that we'll become sloppy and careless. On the contrary, if anything, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's likely to make us preserve, want to seek to preserve life uh, uh, ever more dearly. Yes, considering the Morlocks, this is assuming that something akin to natural selection is going to persist indefinitely. And although as long as there is reproduction there will be selection pressure, the actual nature of that selection pressure changes when prospective parents are picking the genetic makeup of their future children, the personalities, the likely behavioural spectrum, in anticipation of the likely behavioural consequences of their choices. Recall that natural selection is, 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 is blind, uh, mutations are random with respect to the direction of, 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 of evolution, whereas in the new selective era, um, yeah, a, a radically different form of selection pressure and genes that might, or variant alleles, that might in the ancestral environment have been uh, uh, fitness enhancing are, are going to be at a severe disadvantage in many cases in an era when prospective when prospective parents have to uh, uh, choose the makeup of their children. I mean, think for example today in the case of of non-human animals, uh, any gene that promotes uh, a, a viciousness in a cat, for example, is not uh, going to do as well as a variant allele that promotes sweetness and cuteness. Um, now, clearly the, the nature of selection pressure in a post-Darwinian world, or a world in which we're progressively phasing out natural selection, is extraordinarily hard to anticipate. But uh, 
the kinds of nasty, vicious, Morlock-like traits that might have been adaptive in the ancestral environment of adaptiveness on the African savanna, uh, uh, a very different set of traits are going to be fitness-enhancing in the new reproductive era.